Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our December 1st supplemental meeting of the IPFS Implementers Working Group. Come on down. All right. Uh, we only have we have an abbreviated agenda today because uh, we are sneaking in an extra meeting, um, or maybe we're having this meeting at an off-cycle time to make sure that we get it all done for the end of the year. Uh, so today, we're going to be talking about, uh, we have a quick PSA on what's happening with the hydro notes. And then we're going to talk about DAG CBOR and DAG JSON support on the gateways. So first, I believe we have Steve Lucky up with a HydroNote PSA. Yeah, that, that, that that's great. So I linked to the Notion DAG. I'll get in the link here to the discussion format. Uh, PL Andres's ProBlab group has been leading the effort here. Uh, they, they again, they have a discussed at IPFS.tech a post on this. Um, but actually, as we speak. Uh, the uh, Hydra uh, boosters uh, are being di being dialed down in terms of their um, in terms of their usage of a centralized database. They are still functioning as bridges to the indexer network, but their you know their caching uh, provider records um, in the DHT is all that's all being deactivated. Um, this is done after this was being done after a lot of analysis by ProBlab, where the, the Hydra is not actually providing a lot of performance or reliability improvements. Um, from the analysis they did, and you know, were, there's a lot of infrastructure spend being had propping up this database and this service up, uh, and so we are going to, you know, we're dialing dialing that down to, to, to save money at least on the PL end. Uh, obviously, we're, there's a lot of measurement happening right now to confirm that it doesn't have uh, dramatic user impact. Again, you can follow along with uh, the discussion post, and there's a there's a Slack channel uh, on this as well. Uh, but that, that's all in flight. There is future effort to fully, hopefully, dial down the hydras once we don't need the network bridging. But that's a that's a bigger discussion. Um, it relates to some things that we want to talk about around ambient discovery and other things. But that's uh, you know, th that that's still open. I guess I'll also plug that there is a content routing working group that kind of got that had its first meeting earlier this week, trying to make that on a biweekly cadence where we will. Um, be you know, where that that topic is specifically will be flushed out more. We'll certainly be reporting back to the implementers sync because it affects implementers. But uh, there's there's things moving here, um, and I guess that's what I'd say for now. Fantastic. Where can we learn about the content content writing working group? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll add the link into that now. Awesome. Thanks. Steve. Really appreciate yep. it. Um, cool. Now for the main event, um, support for uh, DAG CBOR and DAG JSON on the gateways. Hey. What does it mean? What do we want to do? High level description of the change. Henry, Thanks for away. insisting so much on the pink one. <laughs> I do not. Henrik, I think you might be uh, unmuted. Oh, sorry. Uh, all good. Lytle. <laughs> Take yeah, it I away. can take over because also like Enrique uh, uh, is still a bit sick, so I cannot like fully oh. uh, describe the thing. But all of I, both IPAP and implementation were mostly uh, Enrique uh, under my uh, kind of guidance. Um, so long story short is that historically the first gateway we had uh, in IPFS ecosystem was the one that shipped with GoIPFS, which is now named Kubo, uh, and that gateway. Uh, due to like legacy reasons, uh, only supported Unix FS because initially we only had CIDV0 and only DACPB. Uh, now we have CIDV1, you are able to import data in different envelopes than protobuf, DACPB. That means it could be just raw block of data without any envelope, or it could it also could be just regular JSON, regular CBOR without any additional overhead. Uh, and we have codex for JSON CBOR. Uh, we also have a special strict versions of the CBOR and JSON, which are deterministic. They always serialize to the same bytes. And uh, that means they will always produce the same CID. And we have additional uh, like types uh, there uh, for linking between documents. We have a registered tag 42 at IANA uh, for CBOR, which means you can link from one CBOR document to another. And if you use DAC uh, CBOR, you know there's determinism and people will always end up on the same uh, uh, output. With those primitives, people now are able to build beyond files and directories, arbitrary data structures, 
example of that is uh, how we do uh, uh, JIP uh, lookups in uh, desktop or public gateway checker. Uh, it's just B index, which is a bunch of CBOR uh, represented as a tree. Uh, and that's a search index, which is not a file, it's not a directory. Um, the problem is that the gateways still live in the past and they only support files and directories. So this proposal is to unlock support for uh, JSON and CBOR, which is the most popular data format for, for like plain text and also uh, CBOR is one of the, uh, CBOR and DAG CBOR and DAG JSON and JSON, it's possible to do one-to-one -one conversion for, of the DAG variants, which means you can have a human readable representation uh, and also have a binary compact uh, representation for storage. So we want to add support for those two types uh, to gateways. So people uh, should be able to fetch the serialized JSON and CBOR uh, through gateway. Um, and also leverage the fact that uh, it's part of IPLD and in uh, and also UnixFS is part of uh, IPLD, at least DACPB. So uh, it's possible to represent any uh, IPLD codec as DACJSON or DACSIBOR, which means with this change, people will also be able to fetch uh, things like directory manifest as JSON without having to fetch raw blocks or fetch HTML generated by gateway and parse it to know what are the files in the directory. So there are like nice additional perks by doing this and by leveraging what already have been around in IPLD land for multiple years. It's essentially uh, for people familiar with command line, uh, we have commands for fetching for uh, fetching uh, CBOR and JSON blocks, uh, they are under DAG, uh, under IPFS DAG uh, get. Uh, you are able to get any IPLD data as CBOR or as a JSON, uh, even if it was not originally encoded as such. Uh, so what we are doing, we essentially are exposing that functionality through gateways. And uh, there's IPAP and there's also a working code uh, uh, in the Kubo pull request with a bunch of tests if people are interested on how some edge cases are handled, but I guess I've been talking long enough. So I'll just put a comment there and if there are any questions. So. Hmm. Thank you, uh, Lytle, it's delightful. I'm delighted uh, to... Uh, to have this get this chat moving. Um, I don't know what happened to my meeting notes. One second, sorry. Uh, so this is gonna be the first time we're gonna like have a bit of a showdown. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, so I have a very specific, our team has a very specific set of concerns around linking that might, and I think the theme from last week of can we carve a really small Thing that we can all agree and chip upon should reign supreme in this discussion. But to articulate the concern that we have, IPLD links are a bit of a mess. And the specific mess shows up in the Move the Bytes working group where we're trying to figure out data transfer stuff. And the challenge that shows up at the lower layers of IPFS from the assumption, the one very quiet shift that happens with IPLD links, CID number 42, specifically that you no longer have the guarantee that you are linking to a block. You can now link into parts of blocks. And we have no way of examining a block or a link and understanding if that thing points to data that we need to acquire, data that we already have, data that we need to deserialize, right? And so now we are blurring a line in the linking sector part of the world between the graph structure and the DAG structure, which is kind of confusing. The, uh, 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 the named graph structure that is implied when we allow a data model and the block structure. So is that a discussion about supporting this on the gateways? Only kind of, right? In, in the, the only way in which it's about supporting this on the gateway is 
in the sense that this blurring is being pushed into a very public API that is now foisting a set of requirements upon IPFS implementations that now need to deal with this complexity, right? And so I think that's the way that I would frame this concern. I, I'm the, and there are so many ways in which this ship has already sailed. However, um, I'm trying to hold space for, uh, I have to take my implementers working group hat off and put my IRO maintainer hat on here. And we're very much have the bias of being sort of uh, Unix FS originalists <laughs> in the sense that like uh, there's the IPLD use case in our minds is like, would actually benefit more from being cleaved apart and separated into a different distinct set of technologies um, where we like run into the really nice thing that you get in DAG PB land where you have an optional name for links. And there's a convention of using that to reference when links don't have names, they often are internal block links. So, uh, I, sorry, you scratch that last bit. The, the thing that I want to point to here is this thing has been hanging around in IPLD land. It's creating a lot of complexity as we are trying to speed up the lower half of the stack. And it is creating a serious amount of like just design constraints that we are having to do really major league engineering to make whatever place it replaces bit swap faster. Um, and having this support, like the more this proliferates up at gateway land, the harder this makes things down uh, below. I think that's the case we would make. I'm not, I don't want to be a hard blocker on this. You know, like there, there's lots of ways that we can um, work around it, but I just want to sort of flag that, you know, we're as, as a group, we're highly interested in not having this API proliferate and ideally coming up with some design solution that allows us to delineate these types of links linked to blocks. And these types of links, you have to go and parse the data and create a separate graph database to be able to traverse through this efficiently. Because a lot of the design protocols that were covered, the data transfer protocols we're trying to author are reliant upon being efficiently able to traverse DAGs. And right now we're hard limited on that in ways that are creating a lot of challenges. Now I've been talking for too long, so I'll shut up. <laughs> but, yeah, hopefully that's a hopefully there's something there you can grab onto. Of course. No, I, it's interesting because um, I was very hesitant to mention IPLD at all in the IPIP, but at the same time I realized it's the shortest way to write the specification that people can reason to and link to something. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think that our original idea was to essentially not mention IPLD at all and just say, we the only thing that we support in pathing is Seaboard tag 42. And in case of DAG JSON, it's representation as JSON. And that's always linked to other CID. And that's it. Uh, so I don't know if, if we adjust the spec. Uh, to remove mention of IPLD and IPLD kind link and say that this specification requires, like this is only about how Seaboard tag 42 is handled. Would that be kind of like safer, like the level of safety that you would be comfortable with like to implement it? Because we, we really want uh, IRO gateway to essentially like implement this spec. So there's mm -hmm. like no point into writing something that will be like 80% implemented by Arvo. Right, right. I guess to return, to put the question back to you, if we just do tag 42, do we still have to, in order to parse paths given to us as URLs, are we required to deserialize that CBOR to traverse through it? Of course, right? We have to, to get yeah, the yeah, tag 42. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's kind of like the ship that sailed that you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's already sh ship, the mm -hmm. ship that sailed for like Kubo implementation and in gateways in general. We already have a yeah. bunch of content like NFTs where there's like Cibor manifest linking to UnixFS. And mm -hmm. essentially, like, as long as the last thing on the path is UnixFS, that works today on gateways. So you know, it works on our that works on our gateway today as well. Yeah. yeah. So 
So it's not something we would be changing or it would be not feature creep for you because I was like pretty sure you also had to implement this. Yeah, behavior. we did. Because like so many NFTs work that way. And like your, your gateway uh, failure rate is too high if you don't support this uh, technique. So then maybe this is not actually an argument because maybe like we have actually already have to support this. We already have to do this to be able to support that style of link. And we need to take, and maybe the IRO team needs to take our conversation around links and links event blocks somewhere else. And we may, may and like, maybe this is so not the right time to have this really big <laughs> open discussion about the structure of IPLD no, links. Like, with my like spec person who is not writing very well on, in, in English, but trying to write specs <laughs> uh, with that hat in mind. Uh, I, I, I feel it's still important question to answer, uh, at least during this call, should we like just remove mention of IPLD kinds and links from the spec and just say this behavior is for Doug Seaborg for right now? Because we can always yeah, add so. it later when we do IPLD patch. We cannot add yeah. IPLD patch without mentioning IPLD, but we could add the JSON and Seaborg without mentioning IPLD. So I think, like yeah, okay. I think removing the reference to IPLD makes this more about the thing that already exists. Um, and we have general, then like basically defer that broader conversation. Yeah. And during IPFS camp, I've talked with multiple people and they are the tag 42 was brought up multiple times at uh, IPLD. I, I was kind of com competing with that, but I'd say like the sheer amount of people just leveraging the lower building block suggests it's a good, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would just add a comment to that. Um, and, and sorry if I'm, I'm missing some context here, but uh, I think one of the, the, core, the core issues here uh, would be to, to actually get to the, to the core of IPFS and IPLD, know what each are, and, and then like the specification it's, itself, for either either of those uh shouldn't mention like each other or shouldn't mention a project itself but the the technology behind it so if you're using for example uh paths or or the linking and, and whatnot in the specification you you make that that part of the the technology clear but you don't you don't actually uh, use references to any other project just because uh, if you want others to actually go and use some specification to build another project, another uh, whatever, uh, they should be able to use the specification to, to build it and not go after like references. Those could be, the references could, could be, could serve as inspiration or as uh, like related work and, and whatnot, but not in the, like the, the formal specification of uh, what it, this is and, and uh, how to accomplish that. Um, whatever is in the specification so those are or my my comments for for that Steve great uh, yeah sorry I don't have anything to say about what you just said I don't know if others have comments there the, the only thing I was going to say like game to remove reference for my PLD I did I wonder does it make sense to add an FAQ to the spec about like why are we not or you know, how does this relate to IPLD? Um, or I mean, I don't know if that opens up more cans of worms, but obviously we're being intentional about not bringing I, IPLD here. Um, at least I don't think we have to, like, I think if we could capture some of the, the thinking as to like why we're working at a lower level, um, that that would be useful. And in future, we can always bring IPLD back into the equation, but we can at least acknowledge that it was a conscious choice and that gets captured and people know why. The worry there, at least uh, from my perspective, would be that um, by doing this, we we actually are still kind of bringing IPLD to, to the scene, and and like it, it it's a hard choice, it's, it's a hard decision to make, but uh, from from at least from uh, what I believe, I, I think that the right choice would be to actually go ahead and separate the, the, the projects and decisions and the specifications and only mention as uh, 
if if and only mention if uh, that's for like related work and, and or not, but but don't actually get to mention as something that is a continu continu continuation of, of the work or is uh, like, it's not, uh, we, we have to be careful to not connect uh, the projects because then we risk just not not disconnecting again. So uh, I, yeah, it, it's a hard, hard decision to make, but um, I would go for just the formal specification and, and only mentioning as inspiration or re re related work, but not like, something that is a continuation or, or something like that. I'm literally just gonna read your comment out loud, Lila, that's cool. Or unless you wanna say it. Uh, yeah, just the, the confusion, yeah, Alexander, I think you really, you, you point to something worth noting, right? Like there's, it, there's a lot of intertwining and letting them sort of, I think, Steve, to your point, drop it. I think that comment should just basically say we are using it's a spec and we're being as precise as we possibly can. And so rather than just waving our hands and saying IPLD, it's like, well, there's ambiguity about what we mean here. So we're going to just talk about tag 42 in DAG Seabor and links in JAG JSON because that's less ambiguous, right? And, and it, that alone might be a nice annotation that says, for more info on where and how Dex, you know, a very popular use case for link 42 or for uh, data type 42 and Dex Seabor is IPLD. And like that will help form connective tissue to your point, Alexander, about letting the specs remain separate and maybe the projects referencing each other uh, or their utilization, the common utilization. Um, exactly, cool. 100%. We've we got to be as precise as we can in, this, in, in, in the specification. And and not go like beyond the like the preciseness of one specification and and that is specification only. So, yeah, I, I, I agree on yeah. Awesome. Does anybody have any other thoughts on the topic? I think that's the biggie. It sounds like what I'm going to take back to the IRO team is like, hey, I think we already do this. I think we have to do this anyways, and just all this would allow is for you to truncate a link that we currently already have to parse anyways and prepare some sort of style of response that is um, that fits with a normal, we, we now just have a normalized way of responding with, okay, we're gonna serialize that to the JSON unless the content request type is Siebel. Cool, right? Like that, that type of thing would be, is what I'm gonna take back to the team. We'll respond asynchronously on um, the specs repo with, what we find there, um, uh, barring some thing that I'm not recognizing, I think that makes the most sense. One of the big challenges that we, uh, I want to just take one last second to surface, like set up that leader conversation around some of this and and where we, uh, so like ship settled on on this. Let's let's keep chatting about um, this support because. Uh, to, get to add a reason why this should happen, I have been part of numerous design conversations that have gone to use, that have elected to use DAG PB purely because it displays on the gateway. Um, and that's because the users can just punch those URLs into the gateway and that's their primary means of talking to like IPFS the application, right? When we think about IPFS the application, you hit the URL, you give it a thing and you expect a thing back. And it's, it's a very big UX foot gun for users trying to just get their heads around a data structure to not be able to punch those paths into gateways and like see something that they can humanly parse and interpret and up to and including people designing specs. Um, and so for that alone, that's not good, right? <laughs> um, however, on the counterpoint, we the thing, the conversation that I really want us to have is about just how much we should be focused on this, the challenges that we're creating lower down the stack with the proliferation of links that can co-mingle block references and internal references. But You're muted, you're muted. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so you mentioned very important thing, like why, why are we doing this? 
uh, like what's the reason of uh, adding it? It's essentially like no one is using that. Like Doug Cibor, uh, like Cibor is really good. Like JSON, no one is using it. People are putting JSON files on new XFS, wrapping it in a protobuf because it works on gateway. I can fetch it as that, like JSON and it works in my web app. Uh, so the user experience is essentially why I've been like pushing for this for a long, long time and finally happening. But there's like interesting um, UX question, which may be like a good question for you to also ask the team. Um, so what happens when someone's like removes that uh, DACPB file from the URL and they want to see the uh, DAG Seaboard manifest? What happens in the browser? So the thing that we propose to do in Kubo, and that's up to discussion, but we have like working code, is that if the request comes from the web browser, the browser always sends requests with accept header text HTML. It could be other user agents, but in general, if the user agent says, I'm okay with HTML, we would not, by default, we would not send just binary Doug Seaboard. Uh, Instead, we would do what we do for, for Unix FS directories. For Unix FS directories, we don't send raw Doug PB block. We render HTML for the browser. So the proposal uh, uh, from Enrix PR is to, to do the same. Like if, it's, if the request comes from the browser uh, and it does not have a specific uh, request that give me Seaboard either in the query parameter, give me Cibor, or in the accept header, uh, but it has HTML, we would be returning a user-friendly page. This is like a quick mock-up uh, for the initial version. Uh, the, in, ge in general, we would like to have a single interface for both directories and like, like that Cibor kind of like unified experience. This is like the bare minimum. It says like, hey, this is not a Unix FS, but you can see this as JSON, or you can just fetch a raw block and uh, process it uh, other way. Uh, so this is like what we have uh, in Kubo, and this is what we plan to ship in like RC1, uh, but uh, would love to he hear feedback on this uh, from IRO team or other folks. Uh, just because uh, this is like what people will see when they paste, you know, the Daxib or CAD in their browser. This is what people will see if they put IPFS colon slash slash CAD in Brave. Uh, so I think it's important to flag it during this call as well. Yeah. So there's this, right? Uh, is the locker we're referring to? Hopefully you guys can see what's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's just for, you know, I literally, uh, so, so we, we literally just copy the what current is returned for the directory. And instead of directory listing, we show this basic UI with yeah. options. So can I give you some initial feedback on this right now live? Um, yeah. Love, love the general principle. Uh, the, the listing of this CID is not UnixFS, I think is exposing the end user to the concept of UnixFS, which they're likely, I don't think they need. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is the data link. Like what, like there's just, uh, yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that, that IPFS supported data links. Cool. Um, these, can these be, should we talk in the spec about allowing file extensions in the URLs to just get to force response types in the browser? Is that part of this discussion? Uh, I mean, you can pass fi arbitrary file name and it will be applied. But, I mean, but like if we had, uh, yeah, okay. Um, oh, you mean like CID.json? Uh, yeah. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of like it's a gateway. It, yeah, it, it's like another syntax, but it's also uh, like for JSON, it might not be problematic. You know, with, with J JavaScript, it's tricky. It's the slash is very important for things like service worker scope. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not saying no, but it may require more more thinking. Uh, we already I have. Bad, just I think to, it's a bad just, idea for this for this one. Let's just, just stick flag, with this. Just <laughs> flag. We already have two ways of signaling the format. It's by the format query parameter, and you can also use accept header if we are the Oh, let's one. just do the, let's do the, for, let's just do the format query parameter. I had forgotten about that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it already exists, so we use the same thing. Yeah, yeah. so let's you just do pass, format, JSON, you can format, like, Cibor. Yeah. Literally, like the, the most of users, what people will do, it's like, oh, I have the CID. Uh, 
format equals JSON, I want just to see the JSON representation yeah. in my browser. And that's it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. The the thing about about having a new like file format and ex extension and all that is also the complexity you add uh, to like when you want to upgrade or or when there are breaking changes and and all that. and you have the like the you start hitting um, bottlenecks when when you have to coordinate changes to the to the format so. I would be cautious about having such a <clears throat> such a like such things as uh, file formats and and new extensions and and all that. And and if we decide to do so, I would go for the most simple way, like most simplistic, just like uh, text is and and Markdown and 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 all that, being so simple that that you can. Uh, you basically don't have any breaking changes after like a couple of, of uh, the first one. So my thoughts on this. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if we are talking about the same thing, uh, but I, if, mm -hmm. I felt that maybe I misunderstood what you mean, like the uh, extensions. So I, I understand like the convention for URLs to put like extension there, but I'm thinking like, was, was it like just focused about the aesthetics of the URL or was it about the fact that I want the browser when I kind of like, Control S to save it, to have that file name with proper extension already there. Uh, if that was the question, that's already implemented in the Kubo, but that's we use the content disposition header. So if you requested Cbor, uh, it will use cid.cbor. If you have JSON, even if it was not in the URL, if you try to save it through to that header, it will be cid.json. Or if there was a file name, it will use the file name. So that's uh, that's already like it was already part of the gateway spec. So we reuse the content disposition logic, uh, and it's like you know uh, if, if it's regular JSON or if it's dark JSON, both use dot JSON because it's valid JSON. And also we registered uh, both dark JSON and dark Cibor at Ayana, and the, in that registration there, which uh, uh, maybe I'll you know link just so you can see uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, one second. Uh, yeah, I'll paste quickly. Uh, so uh, there's like a file extension, and that's like dot .cbor and dot .json for the JSON version as well. So we already kind of like standardized this. So it's not there are like no surprises if it's regular yeah. JSON. It's if it can be parsed as JSON or as cbor, you can use regular parser. You DAC, JSON and DAC cbor is useful. Like libraries for them are useful if you are like creating content, but to be able to read content, you it's just regular one yeah that's it and i well, agree totally with uh, alexander that yeah uh, we want to like limit the friction and make it as simple as possible because the every like decision we make around this will increase the complexity that's also why it's important to include beef uh, like uh, iro because you know kubo already has a bunch of stuff uh, <laughs> We, we already had the entire DAG API and that, that pathing was already there. We actually were, had to be like very careful about not exposing too much. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. And it's very important that we do this right because it's bet it's easier to add more than remove stuff after we should. Yeah, I think like at a philosophical level, this is like disseminating more of a pattern that we're like, uh, it's just creating something addicts so many headaches <laughs> and i've got folks asking us actively not to do this because of the per penalties that it will invoke right and so it's like the thing i need to go back and suss out for the arrow team is like do we already do this because if we had to do this to support those nfts then this is not that big a deal but if this involves extra steps that slide us further down what in our view is a somewhat slippery slope um, then I'll come back to y'all with, well, we're grumpy again, <laughs> but we'll get, I'll get you some proper answers about this. Um, it's nice to have such a concrete proposal. I think there's a clear UX win here on the gateway side. It's, this is the fact that it's 2022, almost 2023, and we're still not doing this is kind of embarrassing. Um, so let's, let's see what we can do, but I need to do a formal audit of what iro currently does and make sure that 
we're all on the same page. With that, does anyone want to close out this conversation? Last thoughts? Uh, so kind of like time-wise, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the sooner the feedback arrives, the better, but we, we plan to ship uh, that PR, uh, which is linked from the IPIP. It's like a, the working code for that IPIP. Uh, we plan to ship that with Kubo uh, 18 RC1, maybe before uh, holiday break. Uh, but you know, that's uh, that will be RC1. We can always adjust before the final release. And it may also be a good opportunity to take RC1 uh, for a spin during you know holidays, see how it behaves. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's uh, like our, our, our plan because uh, you know it's been like too long. We want to ship it, but at the same time we we would like to decrease the scope and maybe like ship it less than block entire thing. So if you have a clear proposal, like if you figure out that oh this is not acceptable for the team, but could we like decrease the scope? Uh, we I, I, we are very positive on that as well. We could adjust. We can always add it later because we we have like a work plan around this. We can always have some separate discussions. But you know this is like the food and shelter stage of the support. <laughs> support. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then in which case I will try and get you an answer as soon as possible. Um, including I'll just hop off this call and go yell at some people on internet chat rooms and we'll see what we can we can draw up an answer. Um, cool. Thanks. Much appreciated, everybody. I feel like we can close here. Any other thoughts? Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to chatting. Maybe next week. We'll see if we need that conversation next week. Let's let's uh, stay posted in the um, you know, IPFS implementers in either IPFS Discord or Falcon Slack or Matrix. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. See you guys. Bye.